tell the best kept secret. Hey, What is up, YouTube? It is Mr. Best Kept Secret here, and I'm coming with you with the next episode of my GM Mode commentary. And I saw in the comments in the last video that uh, some of the fans of the Boston Bruin GM Nation are wanting some f Maple Leafs in the uh, in Boston. So we're going to see what we can do right now about that. In the comments section in the last video, they wanted Phil Kessel and Carl Gunnarsson. I don't believe we can actually swing Phil Kessel. And personally, I don't like him even being a Maple Leafs fan. So I think we're just going to try and go after Carl Gunnarsson and improve our defense. If we get him, we can send John Moore down to the minors, which will give him some first unit power play and first pairing defense time, which will be good for his development. And uh, let's see what we can get for him here. All right, so let's see what kind of players we can trade for him. I want to try and see if I can get rid of some of our younger guys who aren't really going to develop into much. So we have our three-star player here, Warsowski and Button. Um, we also have Flick. I could see myself trading probably the older of the three. So 22, 21, and 21. So I'll probably trade Warsowski and uh, probably Flick. And let's see if we can load any, unload any uh, unneeded cap space here. If I could get a grinder that could improve on either Daniel Pye or Rich Peverly, I might be able to see if I can do that in this trade as well. Let's just see what we can get here. Alright, so we could trade McQuaid, but I, I kind of want to keep him. He's 25 years old. His discipline isn't that good as we just check out his stats right here. But still, if, even if he's on the third pairing, he's not going to be getting much ice time anyways. He'll develop into a little bit better of a player as well. So uh, I'd really like to keep him. But uh, let's see if we can make this trade happen without having to trade McQuaid. Alright, so we got McQuaid, Warofsky in the trade right now. And I believe Flick is in there too. As we go to the skaters matching block section. Alright, so we got Warofsky and Flick. It won't go through because there are too many players. So I'll see if I can add a fourth liner to replace Casper's Dogmans and we can put him in the minors. Let's look for a fourth line left winger here. We got... Our choice of Frazier McLaren and Ryan Hamilton. Well, I really like McLaren as a player anyways. 68 overall, not the greatest ratings, but that, uh, that physical category is really what we need on the fourth line. But uh, let's see if we can get a different winger from Toronto. That does not have a very high trade value. We can get Jay McClement, but he does carry a hefty cap number. Ryan Rupert, the unsigned center. Matt Fratton, maybe. Matt Fratton could develop into a very, very good player for us. And he, he would he would help out the third line, but he also, it does list him as a minor checking forward. So we're definitely not going to get Matt Fratton. Alright, there's not a lot of players here that, that have a bad trade value that we'd be able to use, or even that they'd be willing to give up because they're not willing to give up any of them. Alright. Let's see if we can get Leo Komarov in a, lead, in a uh, Boston Bruins uniform. 70 overall, a little bit less than Dogovins, but he does have a very good physical category. His defensive category could improve, but I like his discipline. So let's see if we can get him on, Toron or on Boston here from Toronto. But then again, that cap space, I really don't like our cap situation with that. So I think we go with Frazier McLaren here. We take the lesser of two evils when it comes to cap space. So Warofsky and Flick from McLaren and Gunnarsson. That probably won't go through. So we'll see what kind of picks that they want. And see if I can add any of those to our trade here. Alright. So we got two firsts, a second, and a third, and a bunch of four, or a couple fourth fists in the sixth. Alright. In the last video, I did trade a couple of our second round picks. So let's see if uh, they do want a future third. And I'll give them this year's third. Let's see if this gives us enough trade value for Carl Gunnarsson and Fraser McLaren. 
And it goes through right on. We got Carl Gunnarsson in the Boston Bruins uniform. I am very happy to about that. And on behalf of the Toronto Maple Leafs organization, they accept our trade offer and they say that we'll see us out on the ice. Damn right they will. They're our rivals. And we're going to want to kick their ass every single time we play them. All right, so let's see uh, what kind of how the roster is shaking out right now. So I'm going to move more into the minors. I'm also going to... I'm also going to see what other kind of players I can move down to the minors in a bit. But let's just go through our edit line section. I'll hit the best lines button and then we'll see what we can do from there. So on our first line, I agree. Horton, Bergeron, St. Louis. That's a, top, that's a good first line. Our second line, I would like to see Yager move down to the third line. So we got Marshawn, Krejci. Actually, I'll move. Let's do this here. All right, I think this is a pretty good top 12 as our forward section here. So we got Matt, Nathan Horton, Patrice Bergeron, Martin St. Louis as our first line. We got Tyler Sagan, David Krejci, and Milan Lucic. We got Rich Peverly, Yarmir Yager, and Brad Marchand. We got Frazier McLaren, Mark Savard, and Daniel Pye. I might switch Peverly and Savard real quick right here. Yeah, because... Uh, Peverly's more of a defensive guy, I think. Yeah, he's a pretty good defensive guy, so we'll play him there with McLaren and Paye. Hopefully they can keep the other team off the board. And it already did the defensive pairings for us. Gunnarsson and Ferentz is our second pairing now in Hamilton and McQuaid. All right, in, uh, in the comments section, you guys were saying that we should uh, sh shift up our power play here. So we'll have Krejci in, as our center. Sagan on the first unit. Let me just find his name here. And then you want Martin St. Louis and Gunnarsson. And I'm going to move Nathan Horton up to the first unit. And on the second unit, Marshawn Bergeron and Lucic. So let's just get that set up here. Marshawn Bergeron, Lucic. Hopefully they don't get put in the box too often. And Yager and Dougie Hamilton. I like that combination right there. That looks pretty good. Let's check out St. Louis' stats here. Alright, so he's got a good shot. He could use that from the point, that slap shot power being 88. That's pretty good. And his uh, puck skills category, very good. All in the high 80s or even in two of them are 90 in passing and puck control. Exactly what you need to keep it in the zone. And his, diff and his census category is absolutely amazing. So we'll just uh, we'll keep him right there on the point. Alrighty here. And... Uh, and we'll see. We'll start the season now. We'll st well, I think we can do very well with this team. And I'll just switch over the video here. Alright, so as we get into the preseason here, I'm not going to take too much out of the preseason because a lot, of their rost a lot of the other team's rosters don't have their top players on them. So we're just going to simulate through it. The owner wants 42 wins this season. And I believe we can definitely get that with this team that we have. Alright, now let's jump into the preseason. Their first game against the Toronto Maple Leafs in the preseason. They're already 0-0-1. And we win. And Martin St. Louis gets two goals. But then against preseason, not going to read too much into it. And we win against Ottawa. Which is good. Ottawa's a pretty good team in the actual NHL. And we play against Montreal. The third preseason game is pretty much a tune-up. So we get shellacked by the Montreal Canadiens. They're a good team as well, and you know, we gotta be able to beat the good teams. And I forgot to turn off injuries, so I'm gonna quickly do that here in the rules. Alright, so you guys can also see what uh, what kind of rules I got going on. I'm gonna just turn off the injuries quickly here. And so you guys can see all the rest of what we're working with again, just to make sure. And alright. Also, we don't want we don't want to have injuries during the season. I'll turn them on during playoffs. Just don't want to have them just in case. We want to make sure our players develop into the players that they should be, instead of having major injuries. As we flip through the different team standings and such, we got absolutely shellacked in that last game, 5-1. But uh, again, it's preseason. Not going to look too much into it. We do have some really t we do have one of the, some of the top scores in the preseason, but. Preseason su success does not always mean success in the regular season. So I'm just going to uh, stop the simulation here just to make sure that we're cap eligible. Make sure that we're not too much over the cap here. Let's see what we can do as our cap number. So we only got $0.120 million in cap. And I kind of want to change that. 
So uh, we do have Chris Bork up in the pros. Let's just see if he's actually playing on any lines yet. And since he isn't, he's actually scratched. Probably going to throw him down in the minors just to make sure there is no one else that's scratched so that we can put him down into the minors so that he can uh, develop more as a player. With uh, Caron being down in the minors as well. Let's do the lines for Providence here. I'm going to do the best lines feature right away real quick. Let's just check out some of our other players just to see if any more, any other one of them can get better in their own potential. All right, so we got Christian Hansen here. Three-star goal potential. We'll move him up to the first line. And uh, just checking to see. Just checking. There isn't really anybody else on the team. So let's flip over to defense. We got John Moore on the first unit. Absolutely, that's what we want. And he's also on the first unit power play with Hansen and Carroll. That's good. And our penalty kill, Campbell Carroll, Hansen. More, all right, good. The guys we want to develop, get them all as much ice time as possible. And the game must have signed Cristobal Huet or Hue, however you want to pronounce it. Um, since Fedberg, even though he doesn't have a high potential, even though he could be getting some good potential, um, we're gonna put Svedberg in the net anyways. All right. So now that gives us 0 0.670 million dollars in cap space, and now we're ready to start the season. All right. So we're gonna simulate the first month. And then, uh, if we have enough time in the video, we're going to go through the second month as well. So, uh, they expect us to make the conference finals this year. I think that's definitely achievable with this Boston team. They are old, yes, but we do have the opportunity to score a lot of points. And we do have a good defensive core. And, uh, I could see us making a few trades to improve our team. Especially if guys like Lucic, Marshawn, and even McQuaid don't stay out of the penalty box. I do see myself trading them. Just because I hate going on the penalty kill so much. Because it really does give a huge advantage to the team. Or to the other team, I should say. So really, I don't want to be stuck in a hole already. Our first win, 5 nothing shutout for Tuka Rask. Awesome. Over the Philadelphia Flyers. And again, another win over the New Jersey Devils. Now we play the Montreal Canadiens. And we lose 3-1. Not a lot of goal support for him there. And then we play him again at a home and home, and we lose one nothing again. Not enough goal support for Tuka Rask. Plays his part, but we just need to put some goals up on the board. Play in Dallas. Let's see what we do here, and we win. Alrighty, that's a good win for him. Let's just check to see if that's a shutout for him. Yeah, it was a shutout. Three nothing shutout after being shut out by the Montreal Canadiens. All right, let's simulate up to the end of the month against the Carolina Hurricanes right here and we lose 3-1 probably those Stahl brothers got to us and uh, let's see how we do against the Ducks we win 4-2 it's good it's a good win over Anaheim and let's see how we do against the Islanders and Johnny T and we get the win 3-1 that's pretty good as we're ending out the month 5-3 let's see how this game against Buffalo goes and we get the win another shout out for Tuka Rask awesome and we do have enough time in this video to skip to go to the next month but uh mcquade's already got 17 penalty minutes in nine games that that's pretty high so uh so if he doesn't improve it by this month by the time it rolls around to november 30th we're definitely going to see if there's a training partner for him see what we can get for him so we went against the leafs 2-1 good we beat them we beat our rivals and then we we got a three game winning streak going on uh as we went 4-3 against the capitals now, the Minnesota Wild are going to be a test because they're 7-2-1, and, and they do have a very good team. And we lose 4-2. Ending our streak of three, game, three straight games with a win, but hopefully we can rebound against this Tampa Bay Lightning team. Awesome, we got the win 3-2. And remember, we do have Tampa Bay's first-round pick that we got in that trade for Martin St. Louis. So the worse that they do, the better it is for us. So hopefully we beat them every single chance we get. As we go into this Saturday playing Florida, and we win 2 nothing. Awesome, another shout-out for Tuka Rask, who has 10 wins on the season already. And as we travel, we go up to Ottawa, and let's see how we do. And we lose 5-2. All right, uh, just not good enough defense if they score 5. And we have two straight losses as we lose to the Avalanche. But it is in overtime, so we still do get one point, a crucial point in the standings. And let's see uh, how we do against Winnipeg. I believe we lost that game, which really we can't, uh, can't be losing too many games. And as our scout calls us, 
I feel it'll also be a good year for rookies, as you can see, because you do have McKinnon, Duran, Seth Jones, Hunter Shinkarook, Sean Monaghan. I'm just throwing too many names out here, but there are definitely going to be some stud players in the NHL next year. As we absolutely shellack the New York Islanders 6-3. to Let's see how we can do against New York's other team, and we lose 3-1. They're talented, yeah, but I believe our Boston team can hang with the best of them. As we win against Sidney Crosby's Penguins 3-2. Now let's see how our game against New Jersey goes. And it's a win 3-2. Awesome. Two straight games in a row where we won 3-2. That's very good. And we sh we finish out the month with three straight wins all by one goal. And uh, that's good for Boston. We're 14-7-1 after the first month of the season. And my goodness. Adam McQuay's penalty minutes. That is absolutely nuts. I will not put up with that any longer this season. My goodness. Let's just go into the stats here. And uh, let's see what we can find here for the stats. All right. Let's check our uh, team standings here. Let's see how we stack up against the rest of the NHL. So we are fifth in the NHL for uh, points. And that's pretty good. But our goals for overall, our goals for per game overall is 13th in the NHL. I'd like to see it a bit higher. But uh, when you're winning games, you just you take them as you get them. You know, you just have to score more goals but I do like our goals against per game it's a it's below 2.2 which I like because that's my benchmark is 2.2 and uh, Tuka Rask is doing his job he just needs some more goal support in some games and our power play let's see what that number is here it's 25th in the NHL my goodness that is definitely not good enough for this Boston Bruin team definitely gonna be shaking up the lineups in the next video and our penalty kill, 11th in the NHL, could be a bit better, but then again, it is two months into the season. So some of these teams up here, like Pittsburgh, Nashville, Anaheim, they might drop down a little bit, and we might even improve, which is pretty good. So uh, I like to set it around 88 to 88.5, so around where Minnesota is right now. But uh, we, we'll see what we can do as we improve. So our home record is 7-5-1 so far in the season, and our away record is 7-2-0. And our last 10 were 6-3-1. and one. All solid records. Um, I just want to keep this winning streak going. And let's check out our stats for our NHL team here. Alright, so we got Patrice Berge... Or sorry, let's just uh, separate it by forwards here. So we got Martin St. Louis leading our team in scoring with 19 points. 15 assists. That shows that he's dishing the puck around. But I'd like to see him be a point-of-game player at 22 points. Nathan Horton's got to step it up. David Krejci playing on the second line is playing awesome with Tyler Sagan. You can make a make an argument that Krejci or even Tyler Sagan should be playing on the top line with Horton and St. Louis because Bergeron is not putting up a lot of points as you can see down there with 11. Sagan with 13 points that's good for us now and uh, that second line is really producing of uh, Marshawn, Sagan and Savard or sorry Marshawn, Sagan and Krejci that's, uh, that's a pretty good second line that we got going on uh, but maybe we're going to have to do some line adjustments in the next video here but uh, we can still make that case that Krejci and Sagan could get some first line time because Bergeron is just not cutting it. Brad Marchand with 11 points, Yager with 10, that's pretty good. Yager's doing good on the third line. Lucic, 10 points, I'd like to see Lucic up a bit higher. Fourth liners, that's okay, they're there to play defense. And uh, Zdeno Chera, not even leading our defense in points. Carl Gunnarsson is, great pickup there, thanks fans. And... Uh, he also doesn't have a lot of penalty minutes, which is good. But as you can see at the bottom of the screen, my god, 51 penalty minutes for Adam McQuaid. That is just unacceptable in my books. I, I can't keep playing Adam McQuaid if he's just going to go into the box all the time. I really didn't want to trade him, but you know, we're going to we're definitely going to have to we're going to have to trade him right now. So let's see what we can get for him. As we go into the GM options here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go a little bit off my rules here, and I can trade for anybody. Let's see what kind of pr player we can get. Just going to find uh, just gonna find McQuaid here. Looks like Anaheim doesn't even want him, so i got to go find him in the defenseman section. All right, let's see what we got here. Adam McQuaid. Winnipeg wants him. And let's see what we can get for him from Winnipeg. They're not giving away any skaters. Neither is Washington. Well, Washington's giving away Tom Pody, but he's pretty old. Wouldn't be an upgrade for us, really. But uh, his, his discipline's a lot better. But he carries a hefty cap number. 
and I'm not, I'm not sure we could do that. Let's just check it out here. They are giving up their first round pick, so maybe we could swing something for McQuaid and Pody, but it would just be way too hard because a cap. It is approved, but I don't want to go that low into the cap. As we are point three five three underneath the cap, and I don't want to. Do, I don't want to get myself that cash cap strapped this early. So let's see, Vancouver, no. As we come to Ottawa, Sergei Gonchar is a defenseman. He carries a high cap number. I would like to see him on the team, but can't do it. He has too high of a cap number. As we come to Nashville here, we got Reed Redden already on the trade block. That's funny. And uh, Hal Gill, 80 overall. Good discipline, very tall, loves to throw the body around, has some good qualities about him. Um, I think we'll come back to that one. I'm not 100% sure about Gill just because of his age. I would like to get someone a bit younger, and uh, Montreal not giving away anyone else either. As we come to Columbus here, Adrian Acoin, 39 years old, and he's, I think he's a bit too old for us anyways. Here in Boston, pretty old, does have some pretty decent stats, but I don't, I don't see a swing in something for him, and they don't want to give away a first round pick. If I'm going to take someone that old, I'm definitely going to get a first round pick. I think Winnipeg might be our best option because they're, uh, they do have some good depth on defense, and uh, I think we can make a guy like Mark Stewart down here work. 28 years old. I think he's only a year or two older than McQuaid. Has better discipline. Is about the same player, actually. So if we can actually upgrade McQuaid, that would be a very good opportunity for us here. I think we're definitely going to go after Mark Stewart. So let's throw him up here and let's throw him up on the, uh, up on the trade board. As we just find him here. There we go. And uh, it does go through right away. But uh, again, we're going to be kind of cap strapped here. And we, they also, we also might have to throw in a... We also want to get a first round pick for him. So even if we swap a second for a first, that would be good for us in this deep draft. And uh, let's see what, we can, what else we can kind of do here. McQuaid, let's just check out his stats real quick. Like his discipline, his discipline is just really, really bad, which really sucks because he could be a good player for us. Alrighty, here and let's see. We're gonna have to add someone for cap reasons, or even add a few picks here. I don't, I wouldn't mind going into the cap for this player because we can always switch around people, anyways. And with that first trade offer with the extra picks, it's just not good enough for him. So we're going to have to increase the trade value. That means to me that we're going to have to upgrade the picks that we're sending them back. Alright, so instead of a 4th and 6th and 7th, we'll give them a, like a 3rd or a 2nd from a later year. I can see us giving them a 2nd, meaning like 2017 or something like that. And then, uh, let's make it a 5th. And let's see if this goes through. Awesome, it went through. We, we got Mark Stewart on the team. Upgrade from Adam McQuaid. That is perfect. Exactly what we needed. And we're definitely going to appreciate having Mark Stewart on the team. And this will end our episode here for the third episode of the GMO commentary for the Boston Bruins. As we sit right now, we are 14-7-1. But, um... But I can see us having a very successful season this year in Boston. And this has been Mr. Best Kept Secret. And I am signing out. Peace! We are the best kept secret.